Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to have a look at UV mapping. So first of all, I've got ourselves a cube right here. I'm gonna go ahead over to the materials panel. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new material and I'm gonna set the base color to be a image texture here. I'm then going to apply a texture to this um, object right here. I'm gonna give it a, uh, let's, let's give it a metal texture like this one right here, okay? Uh, now, what happens if, for example, we want this part of the metal texture to be over here, or we want the texture in general to be scaled down, scaled up, moved around? Well, in that case, we can look at UV mapping. So up at the top, you'll see there is a bunch of different layouts. We have modeling, sculpting, UV editing, and that's the one we want to go to. So I'm going to click on UV editing right here, and what you'll see is two windows. On the right-hand side, we have our scene view like normal. Um, uh, and it set us over into edit mode. And on the left hand side, we can zoom out here and you'll see that we have um, our texture laid out right here. And on top of that texture, you'll see we have each face of our cube. So we've got our six faces of the cube laid out on top of the texture right here. And if we, on the right hand side, for example, if we go over, click on uh, material preview up at the top right, so we can actually preview the material. Um, what we can see is if we go into face edit mode and we select a face, you'll see that face gets highlighted here on the left hand side. If we select another, that one gets highlighted and so on. We can press A to select all the faces. And on the left hand side, if we then go up to the top left and just like in edit mode, we have vertex selection, edge selection and face selection. If we select face selection, we can click on a face here and move it around. So if I select a face and I press G, you can see I can move it around and look what happens on the right hand side. As I move the um, face around on the left hand side, the area of the texture of which it is sampling from and which all the other faces are sampling from changes. Okay, so as I, as I move it around here, you'll see it's sampling from a different part of the texture and you'll see it's also getting stretched. Some of these um, cubes are getting stretched so that's why we do have that weird warping uh, happening, but yeah. As you can see, this is basically how UV mapping works. We get a 3D object and we unwrap it, okay? We basically convert a 3D object into a 2D image that we can then lay on top of a texture and whatever texture is underneath it is the pixels that it is sampling in order to display on our screen. So, for example, we can select the middle one here, press S, and we can scale it up. So it's sampling a much larger area, whereas this face, this face is over here. We can scale it up, and as you can see, the uh, texture is getting smaller, but if I scale it down, the texture is getting bigger because the area it's sampling is changing. Uh, we can also rotate things. So I can press A here to select all of it. I can press R and rotate it around like so. And as you can see, the texture is being rotated. Okay, so we've got that there. Um, Right now, we've got our cube. Um, now, when it comes to cubes, they're pretty simple objects. They're one of the most sort of simple 3D objects you can have. So unwrapping this sort of thing is fairly simple, okay? In fact, it does it automatically for us right here with each of the individual faces. All right, so we've got a UV here on the left, but you'll notice that when we select a um, square, for example, let's just say uh, we want to sample this face down here somewhere. Well, if we select that face and press G to move it, you'll see that it drags all the others with it and it just distorts it, not in a nice way. So how can we, for example, get this face and sort of disconnect it from the rest so we can move it freely around? Well, in order to do that, what we want to do is go up to the top left here and you'll see there's a little drop down next to where we can select vertex, edge or face. And we want to click on that and there's three different things. We have disabled, shared location, and shared vertex. This basically determines um, when we select a face, how is it gonna modify other faces? And we, of course, wanna to go to disabled, as that basically means now we can select any face here, press G, and move it around without any of the others being connected to it, okay? Whereas before, if we were to click on one, it would sort of move the other vertices around as well. Whereas now, we are free to move these around wherever we want, rotate them, scale them, just like so, okay? And that is how we can do UV mapping inside of Blender. And of course, when you go to export this uh, model, 
all of the UVs are automatically baked into the model itself, so it'll all be carried over, and you can even replace it with any other texture you want. So for example, if you go into your game engine and you no longer want a metal texture, and instead you want some other texture, the same UV map is going to apply. Okay, so you have this square image right here, and no matter what texture you put on here, these exact UVs are always going to be here until you change them inside of a 3D modeling program like Blender, okay, because it bakes this information into the model itself. Now, in the next lesson, we are going to go over the process of unwrapping multiple different objects, okay? So I'll see you all then in the next lesson.